Now we're going to see about going through a real life installation. Because it's one thing drawing it, but it's another thing actually doing it. Right, this is the contents of the box. Here we have the back plate with a little spirit level on it. A little USB in the back. Here are our terminal screws when hardwired, this is where they'll go. Comes with fixing screws. These read through the manuals provided. We have a USB cable not needed in this installation. And we have a back plate just to hide any unnecessary plaster work. And here's our main box which we need to wire. Here's our main unit. Let's turn that the wrong way. Please don't fit it upside down. If needed, this is how it would sit in the back plate. If the thermostat in your home is actually a wireless radio frequency thermostat, just remember this actually requires power. Only 12 volts, but it still requires two wires. The hardest bit to wire here is this little box here. It's not too bad. Remember, a lot of insulations do not follow the average wiring diagrams. Take photos of your wiring before you start, just in case any wires come loose. Now inside these boxes, it doesn't look all nice like the wiring diagrams, so this will give you an indication of what you're up against. Remember, isolate any power before removing this box. Now it looks scary, but it's not that bad. This one's a neat one. Let's take you through the basic existing process. Here we have a permanent live, which then sits in our 10-way junction box, which we've just took the cover off. Now on these grey wires here, there is a permanent live also sitting up on our zone valve. Now when we turn it on at the central heating, our power comes from our clock back into this 10-way junction box. It then goes up to our room stat. Now if our room stat is calling for heat, if it isn't, that's as far as it gets, but if it's calling, it carries on, goes back to our junction box, and then goes up the brown wire to our motor on our zone valve. This motor then opens which then puts a micro switch, puts power across to our orange wire from the permanent power that's sitting there, which then goes down, joins our junction box, which then just feeds down to our boiler. And if an external pump is fitted, it also can feed our pump. this is the wire we need to get power to. So our power from our central heating when we turn the clock on is actually going to come up this wire here. From this point it will go down to our room thermostat. Now if that room thermostat makes, i.e. it's calling for heat, the power will come back from that point come back up to our junction box goes up the brown wire to our zone valve which looks like this then comes back down from the zone valve on the orange wire making our junction box bringing power down to our boiler now this is how we're going to alter it now we're still going to have a permanent live, may not come from the clock, but it's still going to sit on these grey wires here, which is still going to continue to go up to our zone valves, waiting to be put across. Now also we take a permanent live to our nest box. Now that nest box also has a live waiting to be switched. Now that can come separate wire or could be a link. 
Now, here we have a 12 volt wires. These are gonna be kept separate from any 240 switching. But now this is gonna call for heat, making the 240 side switch, which then brings power down to our junction box, then back up to our zone valve, in which the motor again will open, switching the micro switch, which then puts power down our orange. Exactly the same principle, puts power to our boiler and could lead to the pump. Remove the wire clamps. Rather than using two wires from the junction box like I'm doing, it's possible to take a link from the live to the other side, which is also going to be a permanent live. But I find the holes a little tight for this. Now, you could split the wires in the box with a Wago box, like this. Or you might prefer the screw type connections, which everyone carries. Now I'm using some 5 core heat proof 0.75mm. Quick slice around and then if we just bend it, it should split where we want it. Careful not to nick the wires. Wires can just be stripped on the ends and twisted neat. If you want to keep the ends tighter, keep the ends on and they can twist by the end then, and then simply cut off after. See here we have two permanent lies which are actually linked to the same wire. And we have two 12 volt wires which are kept away from all 240 volts. With our old stat wires removed, we can connect onto our new wires. We can put it into their own junction box and marked as 12 volts. Here's our new power cables dangling from our nest box. Now we're going to take a permanent live from the grey wire on the zone valve and bring up to feed our nest box. Now as there wasn't much room in the nest box for a link, I've used this wire also to be a permanent live, but this one's going to be ready for switching down to spring the central heating on. The grey wire, which we've marked with a brown tab, is going to be the switch live back from the nest box, which is going to bring power up the brown wire, feeding the zone valve to open the motor and bring power back down on its orange wire. Which is then going to put power to our boiler and possibly the pump. Your old central heating live might no longer be required, but in this case it feeds another circuit, so we we'll still need this. Right, it's time to remove the stats. Oh god, a bit messy, but we'll soon sort that out. Put the wires too short as it'll infringe future options. Download the app 